In this manuscript, the authors Del Vecchio and Bucky have prospectively examined outcomes following external breast expansion and lipo augmentation. The results of this study were notable. The volume of grafted fat ranged from 220 to 550 cc's per session per breast. The increase in breast volume based on preoperative and postoperative comparison ranged from 107 to 429 cc's. This represents an increase of 63 to 215%. The percent graft take based on preoperative breast volume, volume of injected fat, and final breast volume ranged from 47 to 105%. MRI analysis demonstrated viable fat without cysts, masses, or fat necrosis. This is an important paper for several reasons. The first is that this study was performed by two well-respected surgeons that have no commercial or financial interest in the Brava device, which was used for external pre-expansion. The second relates to the operative times required for this procedure. Previous reports have mentioned times in the range of four to eight hours for lipo augmentation. In this study, times were less than two hours. The third is that mature adipocytes are a viable source of fat that can be used successfully for this purpose. The fourth is that the noted increase in breast volume is persistent at six months. Personal experience with fat grafting has demonstrated that fat resorption, when it occurs, usually occurs within three to six weeks. In situations where I have had the opportunity to reoperate on patients that were previously fat grafted, viable fat was visualized. I suspect that the grafted fat in these patients will persist over time and that the six month follow-up period was adequate. The final point relates to safety and efficacy. This study has demonstrated efficacy using external pre-expansion followed by lipo augmentation. However, this study has not addressed the issue of safety, which was not one of the primary objectives of the study. Having reviewed several manuscripts on the topic of lipo augmentation alone or external pre-expansion alone, there does not appear to be evidence that suggests a risk of developing breast cancer. Theories about the association of fat, estrogen, aromatase, and breast cancer are relevant. However, breast cancer is a glandular and ductal phenomenon. Although fat is a source of aromatase and estrogen, I am of the opinion that breast cancer is the result of local, systemic, and environmental factors and not the quantity of fat in the breast. That said, this hypothesis needs to be tested to make any final conclusions. In summary, I would like to congratulate these authors on completing this important study. The results of external expansion and lipo augmentation are encouraging. I am confident that we may soon be offering this procedure frequently and on a much wider scale.